My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. It's a feast that came after the visions that were received by St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. This great devotion to the Sacred Heart should eventually spread throughout Europe and throughout the Universal Church. Reminds us of the love of Jesus Christ. The love of God. And this, I think, sometimes is, is a very important truth to focus on. Because at the time that St. Margaret Mary was receiving the visions that she received, there was a very stern outlook about Jesus that the people had. They had this idea that, that Jesus would require everybody to be so completely and totally flawless before they would receive him in communion. There were priests that would boast that there were no sacrilegious communions happening in their churches. That's because they weren't giving out communion. That there were no sacrilegious confessions happening. That's because they weren't allowing people to go to confession. Yet, Jesus wanted to reveal the love of his heart. And we see this as the case in his interaction with with people, especially in the gospel when we see John chapter 4, Jesus talking to the woman at the well who wasn't married and had been with five other guys and, and the guy that she was with currently, her sixth, wasn't her husband either. But Jesus, notice, when we see that encounter, we see him stirring up in her a desire for the holy things that she's actually looking for, but just, as the song goes, looking for love in all the wrong places. Jesus does not condemn. He instead invokes. He convokes. He evokes. He calls to the heart of the person to encounter his love. If Jesus is serious about sin, it's because he's serious about forgiveness. If Jesus is serious about what we're not called to do, it's because his heart is ablaze with burning desire for the world to be set on fire with his love. The Holy Spirit dwelling in us, burning in us. We want to go back to something that we heard in the second reason, the second reading. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. And I think that that's a word for somebody today. I think some, somebody here needs to hear that again. Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's important. Our looking at the cross, our recognition of our sinfulness should not end there. If it does, we get into a morbid self-condemnation That Jesus does not want for us. Actually there is somebody who wants that for us. It's the devil. He wants us to just simply stay there in this idea of sinfulness. He either wants us to stay there as like. Oh okay I'm so so horrible. No good. Or he wants us to reject the idea. That we should have any control. Right. Or that we should have any guidelines. And just go into sin fully. What he doesn't want is for us to recognize. That it's not just about sin. It's not just about sin. The kingdom of God is not just about sin. Sin is part of it. It's not just about forgiveness. It's not just about barely reaching heaven. It's not our God. Our God wants us to know what it's like to be madly in love with somebody. Because he's madly in love with us. This devotion to the sacred heart... It's, it's very key. It's a devotion to the love of God. It's recognizing that God is madly in love with us. 
How do we know this? In Argentina, in Buenos Aires, some years back, there was a Eucharistic miracle that happened. Well, every Eucharist is a miracle in that every Eucharist, what seems like bread and wine, are transubstantiated. That means their, their substance is changed while they remain, technically remain the same on the outside. That is, it looks like bread, tastes like bread, looks like wine, tastes like wine, but is no longer bread and wine. Well, the miracle in this case was that God decided not to keep them in the form of bread and wine. But instead, he allowed a host to bleed and and become fleshy. And they took that host and they sent it to a couple of different medical... um, not Not the entire host. They took parts of the host, and they sent it to different medical institutes without telling them what it was, but asking them their, for their analysis. And they, dis, they, they came back with that it was heart tissue of a man who had suffered severe trauma but was still alive because the white blood cells were still there. So Jesus is not content with the idea of giving us his heart. He's not content with the idea only. Isn't it a nice idea that he loves us? Literally every single mass, he gives us his heart. Not just his heart. He gives us his whole being. His body, his blood, his soul, his divinity. Now, yes, sometimes he has to go through the extraordinary measures of making sure that we see it so that we know, hey, this is true. But the Lord is calling to us today in a particular way to not be afraid of God's love. To not be afraid of this passionate love that he has for us. In in truth, the Lord wants every single one of us to know the depths of his love and to be able to proclaim the depths of his love to others. You know what happened to the book that was written by um, one of the Jesuits who helped St. Margaret Mary Alacoque? What happened was somehow that book got banned Well, these things happen sometimes. The devil tries to hide these things. He wants to stir up any opposition that he can to the truth of the gospel of the love of Jesus Christ. That is, his love for humanity. It's very simple. The response of us today, because if we see what's going on in the world today, we can see a lot of that kind of stuff going on. The response should be this. We want God to release so many graces upon the members of the church that every single one of us becomes a deep, passionate, set-on-fire mystic. Because the devil might be able to stop one book from being published or spread, but he can't stop it if every single person becomes a book or every single person proclaims the same message of the depths of the love of Jesus Christ. And so we ask the Lord today, we ask him, Lord, we might have only seen maybe a little bit of your love, not because you haven't been giving it, but maybe because we haven't been willing to receive it. And so, Jesus, we ask you by your most holy passion, that is your death and resurrection for us, that you might open up the floodgates of our own hearts to receive the immense ocean of your love into us so that overflowing we might do nothing else in our life but proclaim how much you love us and love you back. Amen.